Hi, I'm Coach Rob. Recently I've received a tremendous amount of emails and phone calls from various runners around the world that have been running, no pun intended, into some lower leg injuries that are starting to actually keep them from being out on the open road. And I just wanted to go through six things that in my opinion are the, are the number one causes for these lower leg injuries. Some of them are going to be pretty obvious, some maybe not so obvious, but uh, I just want you to look at it as a, as a big picture as to what's going on every time your foot touches the ground, okay? The one thing that we see quite often, and, and you may have read about it in previous, uh, or seen it in periodicals, and that is runners tend to run on hard surfaces, okay? Some of you that live um, in a part of the country where you don't have the opportunity to run off road or on golf courses or something like that, I want you to, I want to encourage you rather, to really seek those out, all right? Even if you're in, a, in a, an area where there's more concrete than there is uh, woods or off-road areas, look for a golf course. Get out early, get out late, run right off the cart path, and you'll have a nice soft surface that will lower the overall impact on your body every time your foot hits the ground. The second area that uh, people run into with problems with their, with their lower legs, and that is too much volume. I know it sounds obvious because a lot of times when you see a training plan, it'll say, you know, not to increase your volume by X percent each week, depending on who you listen to. And what I want you to understand is there's a lot of credibility to that. The idea is the body is not a machine. You're not a droid. Your body has to have the opportunity to recover, strengthen, and actually elevate its overall fitness level. And the only way to do that is through sleep and food. But when it comes to what's causing these injuries, hard surfaces as well as the, uh, the volume itself could be a little bit too much for the body and it has no choice but to break down, okay? The third thing that I want you to understand is when you look at the, the intensity level that's associated with all of your runs, okay? If you watched one of my other videos about the inverse relationship between volume and intensity and if you're adhering to that, this particular attribute of lower leg injuries may not be bothering you as much, but that's kind of the ironic part about the fourth attribute, and that is having too high of volume and too high of intensity, okay? Remember what we talked about in the last video. The inverse relationship says if you bring the volume up, you must bring the intensity down, okay? If you're going to bring the intensity up, you have to bring the volume down. Now, that can be, that needs to be discussed and reviewed in two ways. One is your overall volume for the week, and then you need to look at your overall volume and intensity for that individual run, okay? that uh, discussion is beyond the scope of this video, but what, I, what I've seen happen a lot of times is people say to themselves, well, I've got a soft surface, that's great, I'm not running too much um, uh, volume, well, now I'm just going to go ahead and take my intensity up to a point that's way, way too hard, and next thing you know, you've got the same injury, okay? Then what muddles it is when you take the intensity and the volume up, okay? So that's, that's something that I want you to be aware of. Be looking at your training logs. Be realistic. Be fair to yourself. Don't try to fudge, well, I, I snuck in an easy you know, three-mile run, so that doesn't count. Every mile counts because every time your body full impact touches that ground, your, everything above that, from your ankles all the way up to your earlobes, have to be able to accommodate that. The, the next attribute I want you to be aware of is not warming up properly. Okay, I shot a separate video about the process of warming up through sports specific activity, then going into some static stretches, dynamic stretches, then going into some accelerations which warms the body up naturally. I want you to pay close attention to that video because an improper warm up, believe it or not, leads to a lot of injuries because the muscle is cold and you start to go right into your main set. And remember, your main set doesn't always have to be hard. It could be slower and longer, an aerobic workout. And yes, it could be short and fast for speed or lactate tolerance. But if you don't warm up properly, you're putting that lower leg, in fact, you're putting the entire body under a lot of stress. So pay attention to that video on how to warm up properly. The last thing that I, the last attribute, number six, I want you to be aware of goes back to the subject of dehydration, okay? I shot a video about how to document what your sweat rate is so that you stay in that real fine range between 1 and 2 percent loss of fluids during a workout is what you're shooting for. Anything more than that, and that's a case of dehydration, if you lose anything less than 1 percent, you actually have overhydrated and put yourself in a state known as hyponatremia. Both have negative effects on your performance and health, but for the scope of this video, what I want you to understand is dehydration 
is no different than if you had a dry sponge. Okay, you have a dry sponge that gets all nice and stiff and then you try to bend it, it's either going to snap or it's going to tear. Notice that when you drop water into a dry sponge, the sponge absorbs it and then the sponge starts to relax and elongate. Well, that's the same thing here. If a muscle doesn't stay hydrated, the typical muscle is about 76% water. So you can see that if you chronically are dehydrated, you're losing more water after every workout and you're, it's what we call chronic dehydration. The muscles in the fascia and the connective tissue that runs parallel with one another, which allows a muscle to function properly, that becomes dry, starts to get sticky, if you will, and what happens is the, the risk of injury goes up. Again, I go back to the analogy of a sponge. It's the quickest visual I can give you on what dehydration does to soft tissue. So when you think about those six elements, running on hard surface, running on uh, at too high of an intensity, too much volume, too much volume and intensity, um, not warming up properly and running into a chronic state of dehydration. All of these are going to lead to lower leg injuries. Um, I, I'm isolating the lower leg right now because that, that compartment of the body tends to be most susceptible to, lower, to uh, running related injuries and that's why I wanted to outline them in today's video. If you have any questions about this video, please email me directly. I'd love to answer your questions. My email address is Rob, R-O-B-B, number three at earthlink.net and I want to thank you for watching the video.